Good day, beautiful soul family, and welcome back to On Another Level. And so really, I'm not going to look into the cameras really now all about that. Um, beautiful soul family, I want to, I, I closed my Bible and I opened it up and it came to um, Job chapter 8. Now, I just, I just did a video about it, uh, but that video didn't go through. And I, I'm, I'm. I'm the type of person where I am truly uh, determined. God gives me a message. I'm going to bring that message out. And especially when I feel like it definitely will help people. So beautiful soul family. Take two. <laughs> so as I opened up, it was, um, it turned to Job chapter eight. I had to do something. I closed it up and we opened it back up, and then it brought me to Jeremiah. It brought me to Jeremiah chapter 30. Now, as I was looking to Jeremiah chapter 30, I looked up, and and, and so it's really what I'm reading is three uh, passages in the Bible. I'm reading from Job chapter 8. I'm reading also Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 30. And also, as I finish reading that, I'm going to start up with Jeremiah chapter 30. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 29, 30, uh, 30 to 32. And then going to read Jeremiah chapter 30. And this is so marvelous. So the reason why it's so marvelous is, well, one, you know, I pray with my family. My family and I, we uh, we do family Bible study. You know, it's, it's really important to do it. And I just, I do my own Bible study, okay? And I... I do family Bible study. We, we for sure pray together, you know, a family that prays together, stays together. And I truly know that, you know, when you are able, you know, as I was younger, um, my mom made sure that I read the Bible, not through and through, but we did have our own Bible studies. Okay. And sorry for the lighting. It's not being so good. Um, but the thing about it is, is that, you know, there's a lot of things going on. Um, last night, as I was doing Bible study, a personal Bible study, um, and I was in the midst of prayer. Uh, I don't know if I'm going insane, <laughs> but I was hearing angels singing. And at first I was, I went outside to the living room and I was like, and I don't want to take this too long, but I went to the living room and I was thinking that my son was probably watching something. Um, and he wasn't. And then I come back and I just sit down for a little bit and I was really listening. And, and then I was thinking, well, maybe it's my neighbors or whatever. And so I was listening and it, it was like, it was a chorus of angels. And there was no music. The music was the, it was a voice. There was two tones. It was the lower tone and it was a group of angels singing in the lower tone. And then it was the upper tone and a group of angels singing in the upper tone. And you know, a beautiful soul family, as you go within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture, as you are building your relationship with God Almighty, it truly is precious and it truly is sacred, okay? It's sacred indeed. And um, and it's something that we definitely need. Now, I must get into this, okay? Because build it means, it means beloved, okay? And so as I do my Bible study, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit tells me, well, what does their name mean? It's important to know what their name means because beautiful soul family, unlike today, okay? Back then, when they 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 named their children, they were waiting for for the the instructions from God Almighty, okay? Um. On. On their children's name, what is it gonna be? Okay, and um. 
And so, and, and it's not only that, but you know, as we go back to um, Genesis, that was, that was Adam's job. He was to look at the characteristics and the personalities of the animals, okay? And to determine, okay, this will be their name based on the characteristics. And I strongly believe, okay, beautiful soul family, that he looked at the woman and determined that she was deceived. And so therefore, Eve, okay? And the Bible does say that she's the woman to all, but I'm just here to let you know, okay? So anyways, Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8, and here it says, Then Bildad, right, the Shuhite, replied. Now, I also looked up Shuhite. And as I looked up the Shuhite, it was saying something about the son of Abraham and Keturah. And what's so interesting is that Abraham remarried. Okay? You know, when you get into the Bible, you know, one thing leads to another. And you're like, whoa, you know, it's... When it comes to the Bible, as I mentioned earlier in my other videos, it's you're you're going on an excavation. You're getting into the Bible, and you're you're able to to get the things that are um, precious and preserved, okay? And so, anyways, so here it says, "Then build at the shoe heights." Replied, "How long will you go on saying these things? Your words are blast of wind." Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? Since your children sinned against them, he, he gave them over to their rebellion. Now, what's so interesting is as I was explaining to my sons, I was like, you know what? It is so important. You know, the truth can take you to the water. Now, how I always said it, right? And sorry for the light and how it's going, but I can take you to the water, but the horse must know, you must know whether you're going to drink it or not, okay? Um, and this is why we must individually, this is not about, okay, my, this is my friend, you know, this is how the world is, you know, they rub shoulders against people and then they drop names, right? But they don't really know this person. And so we can't just drop the name of Yeshua. We must come to understand the love that was shown. We can't just drop God's name. You know, even in the Bible, it says, listen, I know who Yeshua is, but I don't know who you are. You see what I'm saying? And so we have to come with our personal relationship with God, the Almighty. You know, Job, what he did is when his when his sons and daughters had um, had parties, he would go ahead and do sacrifices and offerings on behalf of his of his sons and daughters because he did not know um, if it brought reproach unto God, you know? So anyways, so here it says, since your children sinned against them, he gave them over to their rebellion. And this is something that we're seeing. Maybe if I wave it around. Um, if this is something that we're seeing in the world. You know, it's like, okay, so you're choosing to outrightly do blasphemous, outlandish, atrocities okay and so i'm just gonna let you have at it you know i'm just gonna let you do what you're wanting to do but those who have ears will hear my children will hear me my children will see but it's so beautiful is that the bible goes out to say how god says you know what my children will call out for me and they will know me to be their god and they are my people you see Okay, verse five, but if you earnestly seek God and ask the Almighty for mercy, if you are pure and upright, then he will move even now on your behalf. What's so interesting is just by reading that, it brought me to um, Genesis and where God was talking to Cain, okay? And he was like, listen, Cain, because he was, Cain was upset right? He was despondent about his offering and why it wasn't received from God the Almighty. One, he didn't even have respect in giving off, giving his offerings, okay? Then it says in verse 6 from chapter 4, in Genesis, and it says, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, 
won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desire is for you, but you must rule over it. And so as we see here is the rebellion. It's that desire. It's that flesh. And we have what it takes to rule over it. We have what it takes to say, God, please, I need your mercy. I need you to show me, you know, just like a loving parent. God Almighty is our Heavenly Father. It's almost like I'm pleading, right? But the thing is, is that it says, but if you earnestly seek God, and this is from verse 5 of chapter 8 of Job, if you earnestly seek God and ask for the Almighty for mercy, if you are pure and upright, then he will move even now on your behalf. Okay? And restore the home where your righteousness dwells. That's not just our home, that's our temple. Then even if your being beginnings were modest, your final days will be full of prosperity. And this brought me to, as you know, the, the videos today, God was just, you know, the Holy Spirit just really, you know, I'm I'm earnest. I'm I'm seeking the face of God. Okay. I'm seeking after love. Okay. Um, God is my refuge. God is our refuge. Okay. And so um God was showing me about how Egypt was went through was afflicted with plagues twice. And each time, the first time Abraham and Sarah came out wealthy. And then the second time when there was um now it 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 it's so marvelous because it helps you to see, you know, how so much of it is connected. Okay. And so, but each time the Israelites came out. They were caught up in situations, but they came out and they came out richer than before. And it's brought out here as well. Okay. Now, so interesting because Abraham, now, interesting enough, Sarah, he did, he really didn't lie. Okay. Because Sarah was the half sister. It was his half sister. Okay. And so, you know, um, he really didn't lie, but you see with fear, you know, when we don't, we, and, and what's so interesting is that here in Jeremiah, let me get it, Jeremiah chapter 30, right? The the page next to it says, remembers God's promises, okay? There it says, knowing God through his promises. And the thing about it is, is that when we um are not building our relationship with God Almighty, and we're fearing the world, and we're, 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 looking we're looking at the world and and in so many ways shape and form we are reflecting the world instead of reflecting god almighty you see we're not remembering the covering of yeshua that is over us okay and so we we you know when a person doesn't know that they have a lot of money in the bank they're going to continue to go about their days thinking that they're not rich okay but when we come to understand who we are, beautiful soul family, you know, you there's nothing that the world can do. There isn't nothing that the world can do, okay? So even in the Bible, God's word says, don't, don't be afraid of someone that can bring turmoil and anguish and, and da, da, da to your flesh, okay? It's about your soul. It is about your soul. Okay, so um, then even if your beginnings were modest, because they had left, God told him to leave the family, you know, and to move on with Lot. Okay, and um, so to a degree, they were modest and humble beginnings. And then as they continued forth, they gained prosperity. Okay. And here it says in verse 8, for ask the previous generation and pay attention to what their fathers discovered since we were born only yesterday. And so it's so interesting because in Psalms, um, it talks about lessons that we are to learn, you know, um, 
But anyways, for ask the previous generation and pay attention to what their fathers discovered. Since we were born only yesterday and know nothing, our days on the earth are but a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you and speak from their understanding? Does papayas grow where there is no marsh? Do reeds flourish without water? Will still uncut shoots? Uh, while still uncut shoots, they would dry up quicker than any other plant. Such is the destiny of all who forget God. What's so interesting is knowing God through his promises. You see, God remembers his promises. You know, his promises are not lies. He spoke life. He said, let there be light. And it was good. And so this world, we already know. Look, this world is a matrix. Honest. It's built on green screens and lies and fantasies. And the more that we are awakening and understanding truth. See, this is why they don't want us to have the truth. Because the truth helps us to see the contrast. The truth helps us to see the lies. Okay? And God cannot lie. This is why he has promises. And he does not break his promises. Okay? Do reeds flourish without water? Verse, verse 12. While still uncut shoots, they would dry up quicker than any other plant. Such is the destiny of all who forget God. The hope of the godless will perish. His source of confidence is fragile. What he trusts in is a spider's web. Okay? He leans on his web, but it doesn't stand firm. It's like when people are or going according to the world, they realize, wait a minute, the world is built on sand. Is this even sand? You know, <laughs> right? Um, it appears to be strong, but when a storm comes in, it falls down. Okay. It crumbles away. It disintegrates. All right. His source of confidence is fragile. What he trusts in is a spider's web. He leans on his web, but it doesn't stand firm. He grabs it, but it does not hold up. He now, which is so interesting because the spider web is a silk. And the silk of the spider web can withstand a lot. Okay. So it's in this way, it's really likened to it again, the world. It appears, but it isn't. <laughs> Antichrist appeared to be uh, afflicted, but he wasn't. It appeared that he was healed, but he wasn't. <laughs> because he really wasn't bruised. Okay? But anyways, he leans on his web, but it doesn't stand firm. He grabs it, but it does not hold up. He is well watered plant. He is a well watered plant in the sunshine. His roots spread out over his garden. His roots are intertwined around a pile of rock. He looks for a home among the stones. If he is uprooted from his place, it will deny him, saying, I never saw you. Surely this is the joy of his way of life. Yet others will sprout from the dust. Look. God does not reject a person of integrity, and he will not support evildoers. You know, don't we see that happening into this world? Look, when you cry out for God Almighty, he sure enough hears you. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But he sure enough, he hears us. There are so many people that cry out for the government. They cry out for the world. But they ignore them. They have generated storms, walk forth floods, walk forth calamity, walk forth hurricanes, walk forth earthquakes, all for depopulization. And that is the system of the world. But God Almighty created the earth and he blessed us. And he said, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion with love. What is so interesting, beautiful soul family said immediately, God brought to my memory, Noah, 
okay? And God Almighty said, all, everything will, ha- you will have dominion over everything. Just one thing, you cannot eat of the flesh. Really, the blood. We are not to take part of the blood. Because the blood contains life. And what's so interesting is that contains blood in it. Okay? And this is why we will not take in abominations. All right? But anyways, (laughs) he will, uh, verse 21, he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with a shout of joy. Your enemies will be clothed with shame. The tent of the wicked will no longer exist. Okay? And so here we go into uh, Jeremiah. Check my thing. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 30. Now, as I brought out earlier, we're going according to the names. What does Shemaiah mean? It means God hears. Okay? And it's, or God heard. And it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. <sighs> Send a message to all who exiles, saying, this is what the Lord says concerning Shemaiah, the Nehelamite. Because Shem, Shemaiah, Shemaiah prophesied to you, though I did not send him and made you trust a lie. This is what the Lord says. I am about to punish Shemaiah, the Nehelamite, <laughs> and his descendants. There will not be even one of his descendants living among these people, nor will any ever see the good that I will bring to my people. This is the Lord's declaration, for he has preached rebellion against the Lord. Oh, and it's so interesting, beautiful soul families, that this is what we see today. This is what we see today in the government. And this is what we see today in people. You know, when you're doing your personal, when you have, when you, when you're working with him, when you, you're holding yourself accountable, you know, when you're taking time out for God, as God has taken time to create us, when you're seeking the face of God Almighty, it, like I said, I, I did this video on my computer and it didn't come up. And there are reasons why that took place because I really, as soon as I can, I want to want to put this out there because I feel like somebody, somebody's going to need this. You know, as brought out in Job chapter 8, it says, if you cry out. At this point in time, you know, beautiful soul family, we are not, we're in, we're in a season of the spirit, okay? Hopefully the lights will come on. And the thing about it is, is that this is a spiritual battle. We are not against flesh and blood. And the Bible helps us to see that. The God, the God that we serve, God Almighty, Yahweh. (laughs) My eyes just bugged out, but it is truth. And we have to understand it. It's like with that movie, you know. I may be alone in, in, in saying this, but the tomorrow the tomorrow war or the war tomorrow, the aliens, they were the only reason why they were able to do that jump and go into the future is because the aliens on the Sabbath day they took rest. You know, when the Antichrist comes and makes its apparent People are going to be so amazed by the by its beauty and the swaying of its words. Because that's the way the world is set up. Okay? On the outside, you know, they judge a person by how they look. They don't judge a person by his character. And then so many things take place where people lie, you know? And this is why you've got to continue on being who you are. You know, this is why no matter what you, it's not about the flesh. 
It's about your soul. And whether you like me or not, you know, as a parent, I tell my sons, listen, I'm going to tell you no, and you may not like me right now, but later on, you're going to love me. (laughs) Because it's going to save your life. And, you know, when you go within with self-love, self-care, self-nurture, when you love yourself, you can love others. You can forgive others and set them free, right? (laughs) But my hair is going to bug out. But you can love others. And that's what it's about, okay? So this is what the Lord says. I am about to punish Shemaiah and the, the Nehalamites and his descendants. There will not eat, there will not be even one of his descendants living among these people, nor will any ever see the good that I will bring to my people. Hallelujah. You want to know what? Because this is what they do. <sighs> There are people, there are wicked people who will look into your life, who will see good that manifests in your life, and they don't want it. They would like to do that transference of emotions. But the thing about a beautiful soul family is that, listen, Yeshua said, take off my yoke, for it is light. All right, but anyways, here it says, nor will any ever see the good that you will bring to my people. This is the Lord's declaration. For he has preached rebellion against God. Sorry that the lights are going off and on. It's my camera. But here as we go into Jeremiah chapter 30, it reads this. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Write on a scroll all the words that I have spoken to you. For look, the and this really is what was exciting me, really. All of this, the, everything, okay? This is the Lord's declaration. When I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord. I will restore them to the land I give to their ancestors. And they will possess it. These are the words of the Lord spoke to Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Now check this out. We have heard a cry of terror. Now mind you, Shemaiah means God heard, right? Of dread. There is no peace. Now what's so interesting is that earlier today, God brought me to Revelations. And it was talking about those four horses, right? And the seals. And the third horse was about taking away peace from the earth. Not peace away from the world, because the world only brings tribulation, all right? But peace from the earth, okay? Here it says, verse 6, Ask and see whether the male can give birth. Why then do I see every man? with his hands on his stomach, like a woman in labor. Now, I think that is so interesting because as brought up earlier as well today, we talked about how the Egyptians, they were afflicted with great plagues from God the Almighty. So it's not even about the fact that they didn't know who God was. They knew who God was and is and will always be, right? But they wanted to see themselves as better, okay? And what's so interesting is that what, one of those afflictions when Abram and Sarah is there is that he, he closed up the womb of the Egyptian woman. Okay? And so what's so interesting is that when we are seeing quote-unquote men who portray themselves as being pregnant, okay? Because Nas is not the only one. Nas X or X Nas is not the only one that's doing it. We're seeing more and more people doing it. And the thing about it is, is that they want to portray themselves as men, but they're using the, the, um, the body will always be obedient to God almighty. Okay. The functions of the body of how it's created. And so what's so interesting is God, the almighty, you know, he created male and female. Okay. And so, um, listen, 
uh, Satan, the statue, is both male and female in one body. That's why I say it, okay? And so I'm just saying what's in the in the Bible, okay? And I I support what's in the Bible. I am full agreement with God the Almighty. Okay? And so here it says. Now what's so interesting is that just as God brought the plagues towards the people in um in Egypt, the women in Egypt to shut up their womb. God did not, God is not closing up these women's womb, but yet they're doing an abominable thing, okay? And it says, with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor, and every face turned pale. Now, interesting enough, there are people who are not appreciating themselves. They feel like if they're lightening their skin, then they can make more money, they could be more notarized. But the thing about it is that God the Almighty created us to where we are meant to be. You know, people are changing themselves in so many different ways. And yes, it indeed is an abomination. Okay? How awful that day will be. There will be none other like it. And there is none other like it. Okay? It will be a time of trouble for Jacob. But he will be saved out of it. On that day, this is the declaration of the Lord of armies. I will break his yoke from your neck and tear off your chain of their chains of your chains and strangers will never again enslave them and what's so interesting is that these the um the cain bloodline and the people who are wanting to take the mark of the cain okay so if we're going to get real right they have been seen already as fugitives and vagabonds that's why they bring forth enslavement to the people who are the true residents it talks about how the people will there are the true possessors of the earth because the earth will not produce for that bloodline and so they enslave people but glory to god here it says i will break his yoke from your neck and tear off your chains and strangers will never again enslave him. They will serve the Lord your God, their God and David their king, whom I will rise up for them. As for you, my servant Jacob, do not be afraid. We are we are encouraged. Do not be afraid. This is the Lord's declaration. And do not be discouraged, Israel. For without fail, I will save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their captivity. Jacob will return and have calm and quiet with no one to frighten him. For I will be with you. Glory to God. All right. This is the Lord's declaration to save you. I will bring destruction on all the nations where I have scattered you. However, I will not bring destruction on you. I will discipline you justly. See? I will discipline you justly, all right? And I will by no means leave you unpunished. What we're seeing here is justice. Just like the Israelites that come, that came out of Egypt there, they went through the wilderness. It was supposed to be 11 days. It ended up being longer because there were certain things that they had to let go of. There are certain things that we have to let go of, programmings, manipulations, and come back to the connection to God Almighty. Okay? And beautiful soul family, this all is very important. So before I was getting kind of, uh, when it wasn't recording on my computer, but I'm happy that I'm able to record it on this phone so I can upload it because beautiful soul family, this is truly important. I encourage you to get into the Bible. I encourage you to repent. Here it says, when you cry out to the Lord, God does hear you. And this is about integrity. This is not about what someone, how someone is looking at you and, you know, you appearing to be so. No, this is about something deeper. This is about your soul. And so beautiful soul family, hopefully whoever's hearing this message, may this be the message that helps you. To come back to the Lord. You know, what God was showing me was the prodigal son. 
took his richness and ran out into the world. And then the world left him for dead. And then he had to work doing something he didn't want to do. So pretty much he was groveling home because he didn't forgive himself. But that's the accountability. We we are accountable. We have to show self-love, self-care, self-nurture. And we bring forth healing. We ask for repentance. We cry out for mercy. And God that is looking. He's not filled with dread. Yes, he will discipline us justly. But see, the key word, the operative word is justly, not unfairly. You know, it won't be one person building a house so somebody else can live in it. It won't be somebody who's doing the work and someone else takes the credit. That is an unjust world. And so beautiful soul families, when you call out for God the Almighty, you will get your personal healing and happiness. You will fill those voids with absolute love. And this is important. Beautiful soul family, have a beautiful and wonderful night. God bless.